Howdy friends, I'm Kevin Gilmore and I serve as the pastor at First United Methodist Church of LaPorte. And I'd like to welcome you to this online service of worship, March 12th, 2023. We're in a series right now called Forgive Big. It's the season of Lent and we're uh, talking about forgiveness. And so I'm glad you've uh, chosen to tune in with us today. I hope you find this service of worship a blessing to your life. God bless. Loving God, we thank you for this opportunity to gather and worship today. We are humbled and thankful to worship you. You are our God, and we are your people. O oh God, like Joseph, we don't always understand why things happen the way they do, why our plans and dreams fail, and, why, and, and we find ourselves facing challenge after challenge and disappointment after disappointment. Yet, like Joseph, we also believe that you are at work in our lives and that you have a larger plan and purpose for each one of us. Give us faith to trust in you no matter what challenges we face. Give us courage to place our dreams and ambitions in your hands and then follow where you lead without hesitation, confident that your loving presence goes with us. And now as we gather and pray, we lift the names of those who are in need before you. We ask these things in the name of Jesus the Christ, the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Let us pray. And now, God, may your word be proclaimed, either through me or in spite of me. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I heard a story this week about a woman and her grandmother, a very forgiving, very religious soul, who were sitting on their front porch together discussing a member of the family. Well, he's just no good, the young woman said. He's completely untrustworthy, not to mention lazy. Yes, he's bad, the grandmother said as she rocked back and forth in her rocker. But Jesus loves him. I'm not so sure of that, the younger woman persisted. Oh, yes, assured the elderly lady. Jesus loves him. She rocked and she thought for a few more minutes and then she added, of course, Jesus doesn't know him like we do. You know, that's the way Joseph's brothers felt about their youngest sibling. Joseph had a way of getting under their skin. It wasn't all Joseph's fault, though. His father, Jacob, favored him and, and gave him this beautiful coat of many colors. His ten brothers were furious when they saw Joseph walking around like a king in that coat. They accused Joseph of spying on them to report back to their father. Now, to make matters worse, Joseph dreamed that, that one day his brothers would bow down before him. It's one thing to have such dreams, but another to tell your brothers or sisters about it. Joseph's brothers, they had had enough. They decided to get rid of this spoiled brat once and for all. They stripped him of his beautiful robe and threw him in a deep, dry pit. It was their intention to leave him there to die. Before too long, though, a band of slaves uh, the, the slave dealers appeared. One of the brothers persuaded the others to pull Joseph out of the pit and to sell him as a slave. That way they would be rid of him and make a, a small profit besides. Then they told their father Jacob that a wild animal had attacked and killed Joseph. All that was left was his coat of many colors, which they had found in a field. Well, this, this news left Jacob grief-stricken. His favorite son was dead. Years passed and the brothers continued on with their lives, forgetting the terrible thing that they had done to their brother. At first it appeared that Joseph would do all right in Egypt. He worked hard and his master trusted him. He was thrown into prison one time for an offense that he did not commit, but Joseph continued to have dreams and he gained a reputation for being able to interpret dreams. Eventually, he found himself in the Pharaoh's service. A terrible famine spread throughout the land, and Joseph was put in charge of storing and rationing grain. His position was second only to the Pharaoh's. The famine worsened and spread to other nations, but Joseph's plan had saved many, many lives. One day, a group of Hebrews came in search of food. Joseph immediately recognized them as his brothers. They didn't recognize him, though, and Joseph did not reveal his identity. He chose to speak through an interpreter, giving them the grain that they desired, but accusing them of being spies. They could prove that they weren't spies if they returned with their youngest brother. The men returned and had their youngest brother, Benjamin, with them. Well, they still didn't know that Joseph, whom they had sold into slavery, was standing right there before them. Joseph played another trick on them, placing his favorite silver cup in Benjamin's sack. Benjamin would now have to stay in Egypt. The brothers pleaded with Joseph, telling him that if their, their, they returned without their youngest brother, they, that it would kill their father. Each brother offered to stay in Egypt as a slave if Benjamin was allowed to return home. Joseph then called his brothers closer. This, this was the moment of truth. There would be no more tricks from Joseph. I am your brother Joseph, he said, whom you sold into Egypt. <gasps> the brothers were shocked. They stepped back, fearing the worst. 
And then Joseph spoke one of the most profound and one of the most faith-filled statements in all of Scripture. Do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here for God sent me before you to preserve life. So as we continue to think about forgiveness during this season of Lent, I want to examine the strength to forgive that we find here in Joseph. Joseph was able to forgive his brothers, first of all, because he trusted God. He believed that God was always with him. You know, sometime back uh, years ago, Jerry Levin was assigned as Middle East Bureau Chief for CNN. He viewed his assignment as a challenge. It was a new adventure. Well, one day in 1983, Jerry felt a light tap on his shoulder. A short, bearded man in his early 20s pushed a green handgun into his stomach. Jerry and his colleagues at CNN had talked about the possibility of being kidnapped. You couldn't live in Beirut without it crossing your mind. Still, he never imagined that it would happen to him. Well, two and a half hours later, he was led into a building and shoved into a room where they shackled him to a radiator, and then they left. Jerry waited and waited and listened. He was alone. Days passed in a blur of monotony and fear. Jerry had always thought of Jesus' teachings about forgiveness as incredibly tacky and wimpy and weak need. Now in his solitary cell, Jerry saw that the bully with the gun was the true wimp. The man who says, go ahead and shoot, is not. Then the most remarkable thing happened. Jerry prayed for the first time in years. God, please forgive men like these, like I'm doing right now. He prayed because they are in part responsible for bringing me to you and your son in this moment. Jerry Levine learned to forgive his captors. The hostile, bitter men who who were holding him captive had actually done God's work in his life. God had used his imprisonment to get Jerry's attention. After all, he thought, why else would a middle-aged grandfather be sitting in his underwear in a bare room in Lebanon, chained to a wall. You know, even in times of great uncertainty, in times of of questioning, and in times of struggle, God's hand can be felt in our lives. It was a moment of faith and a moment of maturity for Joseph when he told his brothers, God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth. Joseph was able to forgive his brothers because he trusted God. Second, Joseph realized that there comes a time when we must forgive and move on. You know, it's hard to forgive someone who has wronged us. It's hard to forgive someone who's meant evil against us. It's hard to break with the past, but that's exactly what Joseph did. Now, maybe Joseph wanted revenge when he was first sold into slavery. Maybe he thought of ways to get even with his brothers. But as the years passed, he saw God's hand at work in his life, and his his anger began to subside. All his buried thoughts and emotions surfaced the day that his brothers stood before him. They came in desperate need of his help. You know, some suggest that in Joseph's long conversations with his brothers, he he was trying to decide what to do with them. Should he get even or should he forgive them? He was in a position of power. He could give them a taste of their own medicine and have them all thrown into prison. At the end, though, his love for his brothers won out. Jesus forgave his brothers for everything that they had done to him as a youth. The brothers who were afraid of this powerful man now who stood before them but embraced him as their long-lost brother and he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them and after that his brothers talked with him the power of forgiveness works both ways joseph forgave the brothers for what they had done 
The brothers, they forgave Joseph for being a spoiled brat. Phyllis Tickle tells a, of a vacation that she had with her two teenage children, Sam, age 16, and Rebecca, age 13. One hot summer day, the two siblings were just fighting nonstop with each other. Neither could move without offending the other. That evening, Rebecca tried to physically evict her brother from the best TV chair there and instead broke the, the crystal in the band on his new watch that he had gotten for his birthday. She was at that moment too stunned to move and Sam was angry. Phyllis said you could see the anger written all over Sam's face. Suddenly though, the fury receded, changing into, the look, to, into a look that can only be described as a kind of startled surprise. It's okay. It's okay, he said. I think I know where to get it fixed tomorrow. Well, peace returned to the siblings for the first time in a long time in that household. The next morning during breakfast, Phyllis asked her son what had happened in that moment to ch that changed the night before. He, he ducked his head a little bit as if he were somehow uncomfortable. Nothing really, he said. I was just so hurt. I couldn't hate her enough. So I knew I had to forgive her. And it surprised me. Seeing God's hand working in his life allowed Joseph the freedom to become a brother again. He forgave his brothers for what they had done to him some years earlier, and the family was restored. It was an emotionally charged moment as he and his brothers embraced. Apparently, the Pharaoh was moved by the events between Joseph and his brothers as well. The final piece of the puzzle was now in place. And the Pharaoh told Joseph, Take your father and your households and come to me, so that I may give you the best of the land of Egypt. They would not starve to death. Instead, they would have plenty of food. They would even prosper. Joseph invited his brothers to come and live with him in Egypt. And joyfully, they returned home to, to tell their father that Joseph was alive, that he was now a leader in Egypt. The very best of Egypt would be theirs. What a, what a beautiful, happy ending to a, to a story brought about by the willingness of a brother to forgive. But I think there's one final thing we need to see here. Joseph really was a special young man. He was special because he trusted God. He was special because he realized he needed to forgive and move on. But even more important though, Joseph showed why he was so special by his willingness to forgive. Mahatma Gandhi once said, something that deserves our thought. The weak, he said, can never forgive. Forgiveness is the attribute of the strong. You know, that's the same discovery that Jerry Levin made as a hostage in Lebanon. Levin was stronger than his captors because he was willing to forgive them. Only the strong can forgive. Ernest Campbell wrote over 25 years ago about a clergyman in Boston who, for some reason, had inflamed the anger of a woman in his parish. This woman wrote poison, poison, poison pen letters to the minister all the time. And she was tireless in her effort to build up dissension against him in the congregation. Well, after this unpleasant relationship had spent itself over many years, quite unexpectedly, the woman moved to Arizona. Many, many months later, the clergyman received a letter from her saying simply that she had a change of heart and that she was enormously sorry for all that she had done. She begged the pastor's forgiveness. Well, the minister telegraphed her this message, forgiven, forgotten, forever. That's a message from the heart of a strong person. It takes faith to believe that what others meant for evil, God can use for good. It takes faith to move beyond resentment 
to rekindled love. It takes strong men and women to accomplish such tasks, but it can be done. Joseph did it in Egypt by trusting God, by recognizing his need to forgive and move on, and by his willingness to forgive. Jesus also did it on the cross. Jerry Levin did it in prison in Lebanon. How about you? Are you strong enough to forgive? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hey again, thanks so much for uh, tuning in and, and watching this online service of worship with us uh, this morning. I hope you found this service uh, of worship a blessing to your life. If there's anything that we can do for you, please, please let us know. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. 
May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forever. Amen.